Greetings, and welcome to Quantum Healing with Candace. I'm your host, Candace Craw Goldman. This program was created to assist humans in this rapidly changing world, while it's expanding into new realms, new ways of thinking and being. It is based upon the foundation of the late, great Dolores Cannon's work, and our continued contact with her from beyond the veil. So thank you, Dolores, for continuing to encourage us to explore new directions. Also thanks to Greg Prescott and Michelle Walling at In5D.com for making this show possible. I'd like to take a moment to thank all of my wonderful supporters of the show and this work and all of my In5D friends, my New Earth Journey friends, my Facebook friends, QHHT practitioners, and of course, clients. With humanity's new understanding and acceptance of the quantum world and the role that consciousness plays in shaping both our individual and our collective reality, we have plenty of subject material for this show. I'm a full-time practitioner of Dolores' hypnosis method and had the honor and distinct privilege of working with and alongside of her for several years. You can find out more about my practice of quantum healing and my consulting and coaching services at NewEarthJourney.com. And I'd like to mention I'm now offering two new remote quantum healing services. One is Quantum Healing Meditation Process, a personalized and completely unique to you downloadable MP3 file. I'm also offering a new long distance quantum energy healing service that you can think of as something similar to distance Reiki. Call or email me about details. And lastly, before we get started tonight, for those of you looking for a practitioner of Dolores Cannon's method of quantum healing, or for those who have trained with Dolores in the past, take note of this website, DoloresCannonQHHT.com. There you will find an easy-to-use photo listing of practitioners, their blogs, YouTubes, and published books. And also for the serious practitioner of Dolores' method, her original Quantum Healing Support Forum, which has eight years of abundant resources. And again, you can find all of that at DoloresCannonQHHT.com. This show supports those who are dedicated members of our Support Forum community. So today is May 27th, 2016, and I've been having a fascinating conversation with a couple of colleagues and very good friends of mine. Nicole Radke and Sandy Neville. And we've been talking about the Mandela Effect and we've been having quite a spirited Facebook discussion and exchange and we just decided to bring it right on over to a radio show. So that's what we're doing this evening. So Nicole, you were just asking me a question and I said, hold on, let me turn on the recorder and uh, here we go. So go ahead, Nicole. Well, I'm so excited about this because it, it seems like we just opened a can of worms. <laughs> but um, well, I was just saying that, you know, you kind of started on Facebook when you posted the picture about the Berenstein Bears. And I was wondering if that's a picture of uh, yours personally or, you know, what the story was behind it because we've seen so many different things come and go. But especially these last couple days, something definitely shifted. So Yes, absolutely. As a matter of fact, my first, um, and welcome to the show, and you welcome to you too, Sandy. Hi, Sandy. <laughs> Are you there, Sandy? Nice to be here. Okay, good. <laughs> yes. yes. Good. Um, well, I'm so glad to have both of you to speak with this evening. Yes, so I, I actually uh, joke that I should have a Bernstein bear uh, show, but that's really just a touch point. I mean, I guess we probably could have a show where we talk nothing else about that, but mostly what we're talking about today, for those of you who may not be completely familiar with the concept, is we are talking about the Mandela Effect. And the Mandela Effect, to uh, be clear or to define, is a, a phenomenon that seems to indicate that we as humans on Earth have experienced a different sort of timelines. And the reason it's called the Mandela Effect is it became known to a particular person. I don't have, I believe it's a woman, I don't have her name right offhand, but she noticed that a particular set of, um, of the population would remember a uh, 
a historical event with Nelson Mandela completely differently than, than another part of the population. So there is a great number of people who are alive on the planet today who absolutely experienced hearing the news that Nelson Mandela, who was imprisoned in South Africa, had died in prison and then there was this funeral and, and all of the aftermath and the political repercussions, etc. And it was a it was a huge historical event. And then there's a whole nother part of the population who had Nelson Mandela actually leave prison and become president of South, South Africa. That is the particular timeline I remember and that I am on. So it was this fact that, uh, uh, you know, thousands upon thousands of people apparently had a different memory of what happened and have visual memory, visual recall of the procession in the streets and the funeral, etc. Uh, when he died in prison versus this whole other part of the world who experienced a completely different timeline. So that's why we're calling it the Mandela Effect because this is when, when the name was given a name, or excuse me, when the phenomena was given a name. And, and then subsequently what we've discovered as humans is there's possibly implications in all areas of our lives. Pop culture is a, a good one and a big one and one where, where we're all able to talk about things we remember like song lyrics or television series names or book titles or et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, lines out of movies and that kind of thing. But, but there's really other things too. Uh, significant historical events. Here's one, um, manned landings on the moon. In my particular timeline, <laughs> in my particular timeline, human beings only landed on the moon one time. Just one time. But if you go to Wikipedia, if you talk to other people, if you talk about people's memories, there's a, there's a variation on that, at least three. It sounds like uh, a lot of people remember one landing, uh, another group remember four, and then another group remember several more, um, eight to 12 uh, kind of landings. Uh, it was interesting when I was talking to my husband about that particular one, because he remembered about four, and I remember just the one, and I remember watching the news and them saying, we don't ever have to do this again. We did it once. There's just rocks there and dust. We can do everything remotely. We don't have to, um, you know, That's so interesting. Yeah, we, we don't have to put human beings at risk anymore. And, and my husband said, and I still love this. We, we said it again today. He said, well, what about the lunar rover? Don't you remember the lunar rover when the astronauts were bouncing all over the dunes in the lunar rover? And you know what I said? And this is giving me goosebumps just thinking about it. I absolutely remember the lunar rover. In my timeline, they did it via remote control. Oh, really? See, I don't remember it being remote control. Yeah. I know. Isn't that crazy? I remember an app. <laughs> and I remember having the thought, damn, I bet those astronauts, because they all were um, orbiting the moon. They just didn't land on it. They were orbiting and running the remote equipment from the orbit. And I remember thinking, that lunar rover looks like people should be in it. I bet yeah. those astronauts wish people were in it, but they had decided, and they talked about it ad nauseum. We're not going to put people in the rover after all. We're just going to do it with the remote controls, etc. So there's that, and there's that kind of historical thing. And then, Nicole, you were talking about maps today, that yeah. maps have changed. So we're talking about any number of, of, of things in our collective human memory and it seems like there's at least three, and they and your and the timelines cross back and forth, and back and forth, and and to get finally to your question, Nicole, that was not my uh, photograph. I just in the last day or so um, uh, was invited to after my post um, to a uh, a Mandela effect group, I guess, or there was something mm -hmm. else about timelines, or I don't even remember. Uh, the, the exact uh, sequence of events, but it was somebody else's photograph, and but it was many, many, many books uh, with the Bernstein spelled E I N. Yeah, mm -hmm. very interesting. Yeah, I think I'm on the same group. Uh, you know, I want to say that this is really going down the rabbit hole because it's not just uh, memories and book titles and geography. Um, 
later on we'll talk about anatomy too, which that one really got me. Oh my god, did you just four o'clock this morning? Did you just say anatomy? Yeah. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. Yeah, that's really wild. Yeah. The anatomy is really different here. So uh, okay. <laughs> I'm I'm doing the radio show at my dad's house, and he promised me he turned that phone off, but I guess he didn't quite make it. I I might just have to go over there and do that. So pardon that interruption. That's Hopefully, okay. we won't have another one of those. But but uh, just go ahead. The maps are interesting because if you look at you know anybody can pull up Google Earth or Google Maps, um, and if you for instance if you look at Australia, it seems like it's it's much further to the north it seems like it's the shape is different um, my memory of it was that there was a lot more uh, water around it you know it was kind of isolated but now it's kind of butting up right against the, um, like Papua New Guinea and it's just interesting when you start looking at some of these things you know we kind of think that do I remember this right or is my memory failing me and that's something that Sandy and I were talking about earlier today that it seems like there's this as you're recalling it you start to question your memory because you know the internet says well the map <laughs> says it's that way so it must be but um, there's all oh there's a whole list of it um, Florida seems like it's too short if you if you pull up the map, it seems like the shape is a little different. Um, they're talking about uh, Cuba being closer to Mexico, so just kind of look at it for yourself and see what you think. But it definitely seems like there's there's something that's different about it. In all areas of our life, now Sandy, you were bringing up the anatomy thing. Uh, what? I, I'm sorry, but this one's brand new to me. <laughs> I hadn't even heard this one. So there's something different in human anatomy. Oh, do tell. Yeah. Yes, the um, the rib cage seems to be up higher. So if you were to um, touch where, like, from your neck to your your ribs, um, it's a lot. It's it's right there. It's a lot yeah. uh, Feel higher. It. It's yeah. Feel it. It's, <laughs> it's a lot higher than it used to be. Um, that's, that's amazing because it, it feels to me like it's moved about an inch or an inch and a half. Hold, yeah, at least. hold on, hold on, hold yes. on. In your own bodies, you're feeling yes. this. Yes. Okay. Yes. I, I found this about 3.30 this morning. I was watching some YouTube videos, couldn't sleep, and what, that was one of the things we were talking about was the anatomy. And so I started feeling up there, and I'm very familiar with my own body, and it felt like my rib cage is literally in my throat. So that jugular notch that you have, just feel around. Feel your, um, your collarbone and your clavicle. It, it feels like it's more enclosed. Oh, my God. Oh my God! Yes, you know, <laughs> I, you know. Imagine all the people who are listening to this right now, and they're all like touching their um, their chests. I know their, their rib cage. I, you know, you might might really have something there. It makes me wonder when that might have happened because you know, earlier this year, I was experiencing some very strange chest pains. <laughs> That you know were yeah. were very um, well off the charts, shall we say? Interesting, yeah. right? Sandy, you and I um, were talking I, about that earlier. We were. Um, I've been having a lot of um, upper respiratory. Um, actually, it feels like gas, but it, it's the pressure in in the lung area, and and basically. If you look at pictures of the anatomy now, our lungs are smaller. Yes. And they're up higher, and our liver is larger, and our kidneys are higher, and they're kind of tucked up under our rib cage. Um, that's not what I remember at all. <laughs> not at all. Um, we, where I came from, we had much larger lungs. The liver was smaller. Um, it, it's, it's way different. 
Wow. So yeah. we need somebody who's like, you know, studied anatomy to weigh in on this one. Um, Absolutely. That's just so fascinating. So, um, so is there a sense by either of you when this particular thing came about? I mean, I don't know. I, I was talking um, to a few people. This, For me, it seems like this last month I was going through changes because I was feeling aches and pains in my body that I haven't felt in over six years. I've been very, very healthy. Um, and there were just these odd little things, especially with, uh, you know, right in the stomach area, getting sharp pains, um, pains on, on the right side, just random things that felt like either my body was adjusting or doing something. Um, this, for me personally, this last month has been very strange. But I think it's, it's happening to people at different periods. But overall, it seems like this last maybe six months, there's been a lot mm -hmm. of changes. Yeah, that's just fascinating. Yeah, I would agree. Six months has been uh, a lot of changes in the last six months. Oh, sorry, six weeks. Um, I've actually had mm -hmm. about six months of this. It's, it really started with my ears. Um, I started getting very, very dizzy to, to a point where I would have to lay down and could not get up, um, which I, I had experienced that many years ago, um, but then it stopped. Um, now, an interesting thing is if you look at the anatomy or the, the skeleton of our skulls, our skulls have actually changed form as well. So that, that's another one to, to Google and, and yeah. look at. Um, I'm, I'm not sure with the, the balance um, thing with the ears, but there's been aches and pains and um, basically um, the nervous system. Oh, wait, whoa, 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 system. whoa. So I'm looking at the skull while we're doing this. Yes. Right? You see, see above the ear the weird little notch thing in there? You know, um, and to me, the back of the head seems smaller. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, it does. Whoa. Oh, my gosh. Yeah, it seems like the ocular cavity is larger. Um, and if you look at the side uh, behind the ocular cavity and the, the cheekbone, there's a, that indentation is there. Seems like it's much deeper. Yeah. It really, it really, oh my gosh. Fascinating. Oh, it really, really is fascinating. Um, I'm going to have to talk to some doctors about this. <laughs> and you know, <laughs> And, 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 and another area that uh, is one of the reasons I know I wanted to talk about this tonight is there's some people who, uh, you know, have found a couple Bible passages that they yes. recently n uh, have changed or that seems to have changed. Um, and, and I did listen to a very thoughtful video by a man, and I'm, 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 I'm far too uh, tired, stressed, and unprepared to say what his name was. I'm so sorry. But I did listen to a YouTube of him speak very clearly about a couple of Bible uh, passages and uh, another uh, historical event, just a C-SPAN uh, airing that was recorded and put on YouTube that of a man that never existed. Uh, but he, but his was a fascinating YouTube, and I'll put his I'll put the link to that YouTube um, on this in the links underneath this description of the show because he had a very thoughtful way of talking about this. Meaning, um, it's uh, these some of these anomalies are talked about on forums and in Google and in different places, and including uh, the Onion, and they and they are claimed to be hoaxes. And he says you need to really pay attention to this because what he is talking about is the possibility of that they're not at all hoaxes. They're actually, you know, glitches or proofs or whatever, but they are tagged or claimed to be hoaxes so that we don't ask any more questions. Well, that was the video that sent me down the rabbit hole. <laughs> so do you happen to remember who that was? Yeah, yeah. yes. Um, his YouTube name is, uh, I don't know if I'm pronouncing this right, Mr. Cotty, uh, Mr. Or M R C A T I, mm -hmm. 
and it's the Mandela effect and the time splicing discussion. Yes, the time the splicing video. discussion. Absolutely, yes. that's exactly what it was. And yeah. so, thank you to him. He, um, he, it well worth your time to watch this video. Well, here's a here's a, an easy one. Uh, you remember the um, story of Snow White and you know the mirror on the wall. Mm -hmm. what, what's what's the phrase that every little girl says? Repeats in the movie. Mirror, mirror on the wall. Who's the fairest of them all? So you would think. Yep, and it's not it's, that. It's magic mirror. Yeah. If you go to Disney, it's magic mirror. Mm -hmm. And these these old videos are, um, you know, uh, they're on digital and they're on the internet. And so anything digital, anything that, that you see like that, you know could possibly be manipulated, but it is in our mind. That's the places that we really need to talk about. You know, mm -hmm. your, what you remember, what I remember, without going to Wikipedia, without going yes. to a book, without going to a source outside of yourself, what is it that you remember about your own reality? And, and I, you know, we can go, go through some more examples, and of course it's yeah. fun or very interesting to do that. But the bigger, bigger issue is, of course, what the heck? What is it? Is it, is it uh, something that's being done? Is it natural? Are we just uh, discovering it? Is this, is this some sort of plan? You know, what's going on? I know a lot of people talk about CERN. Um, and Sandy, you know, you're pretty, you're pretty well versed uh, as far as that goes. Uh, why don't you give us a perspective about that? Um, I really think that this is possibly some effect from CERN, but when I, when I stop and I um, kind of get the big picture, I, I think that they don't really have anything to do with it. Um, I, I think that that would kind of be one of the ideas of throwing people off the, what's really happening, like the big, big picture. Um, and I know that um, there, we, all, we all know that there's timelines. Um, so I'm not quite sure how we're moving exactly. Um, but I really don't think that CERN is messing with us in that way. I think they have a completely different agenda than, than what we are experiencing here. Mm -hmm. Nicole, do you have an idea about CERN or some I, different information? I would agree with that. I think that maybe they tapped into or found something, so maybe piggybacking on whatever else is happening. Um, so the idea right. that what, what I understand with CERN is that they're really good at creating mirror realities, um, but I don't think they're the ones that kind of started the clock to tick. I think there's, there's a much bigger much bigger effect going on. To me, it seems like there is, you know, especially with QHHT, we talk about different realities and different dimensions. Um, and from personal experience, just the effect of time, I think it's time that's either falling away or kind of disappearing as, because, you know, time is that fourth dimension. Mm -hmm. And as we move through these different dimensional realities, I think it's that's what's happening. So my time reality is different than your time reality and so we have differing memories with some aspects. Now it does seem like as we're talking about, you know, well I remember this, I remember that, that there is, and I think it's because we work with this so much we pick up on the, the small nuances. It does seem like your memory is adjusting at the same time. Um, I don't know if I'm quite explaining that quite right, but um, Sandy, we were talking about that earlier. What was your experience with when we were talked about the the memory recall where it seems like it's changing yeah, um, in the moment as you're trying to figure it out? When you when you first notice that you have entered into a different um, reality, you start to pick up and notice things, and you re you can recall your your memories quite well um, but as you exist in that reality for uh, I'll just say a length of time I, I don't have an idea of how long but as you are in that it seems like the memories are fade as though there's an overlapping of um, 
of of memory. So yeah, if you can if you can imagine layers of sheets of paper kind of falling on top of you and and that that's your memory and and it's building on what's existing around you now so i believe that it's going to be more and more difficult to recall the differences um as we exist in this reality yeah i think it's that holographic time does that make sense illusion that's becoming apparent uh, you know, I find really, really right. interesting is um, the different reactions people have to this subject. There are are some, and of course, most of them are people in our community because we talk about this kind of stuff all the time. You need, they, we get kind of excited because we feel like we're discovering something, we're learning something, maybe we understand a little bit, bit more about reality. And, and suddenly it starts to explain some things. And, and quite frankly, for me, you know what? <laughs> you know, my favorite thing about the, the Mandela effect is I know there's some really big implications. But for me personally, when my husband and I now like argue about who said what, about what, who would do, <laughs> or what, what happened, or whatever. <laughs> We just look at each other and instead of like saying, are you kidding me? You don't remember that and, you know, fill in the blank. You know, it just yes. happened, you know, 15 minutes ago or whatever. And, and we just look at each other and we kind of go, well, gosh, you know, in my reality, uh, I did hand you those car keys and I did that right before we went outside, you know. And he'll say, you know, but in my reality, you walked right past me and uh, never gave me the keys at all. And rather than argue about it and, mm -hmm. and, and insist anything, we both sort of shrug and we move on. And that's kind of neat, isn't it? Well, I think that opens up the question about, you know, why is all this happening? Why are we aware of it in the first place? And for me, it's that communication. You just hit the nail right on the head, I think, that we get so stuck in the way that we think about things and we, we argue and we really have, we've been disconnected from so many things. Um, to ultimately boils down to communication for me. Um, you know, also with the CERN thing, I think that if anything, it's more like they're digging holes into dimensions. Mm -hmm. Yeah, maybe making parts of parts of something unstable or something. Uh, yeah, where, where things are happening. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Well, th you know, there's this whole other reaction and. Uh, uh, one happened, I, I think it was on, on my, my Facebook, although it was um, it, it certainly, I don't get into debate anymore. I'm not interested in debate, uh, but I like sharing ideas and I like hearing different viewpoints of ideas. But, but sort of the insistence that someone's right and someone's wrong, you know, that's, that's so old reality for me. I want nothing to do with that. But, um, you know, for example, though, some people get, you know, quite upset and they're like, no, 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 I can prove it to you. And, and they want to prove it to you by like looking for historical records. And the mm. whole the whole idea is you can't do that. The historical records are only historical for the particular timeline that we're on. So you can't yes. go looking for recorded proof of any kind to prove anything because that's not the point. That's not the point at all. You've moved from one one place where one thing was recorded into another kind of realm where something else was recorded. So, for example. I, th I believe the comment was that this man said, you know, my wife worked with Stan and Jan Bernstein, and they would get really upset if their name was spelled with an E because it was never spelled with an E. It was spelled with an A. But here's my memory. Mm -hmm. My memory of it was this. My kids in the uh, early 90s were in elementary school, and that's when I was reading these books to my kids. And I remember having them in the house and reading them hundreds of times to my children and I was one of those people who for quite some time I didn't know if it was spelled Stein or Stein and I would look at that name and I knew it was very much like Frankenstein right yes because it was, right. was it right. was spelled with an E and I remember thinking is it Stein or Stein and I could never really decide so I flipped back and forth I would say Stein for a while I would say Stein for another while and there were times in my own head while I'm reading to my young children that I thought, um, I wonder if I'm mucking up their, um, you know, ability to sound out words in the future because I can't settle on one way or the other. And maybe, I, and you know, we didn't have really the internet back then. There wasn't a way to kind of quickly look it up. 
uh, and I kept meaning for the longest time, and it, it did take me quite a while to, to finally talk to, to other people. You know, how do you say that? You know, how do you say the name of that, um, you know, that name? And then I remember speaking with some sort of teacher who, who had, and I don't remember which teacher or how, I may have been teacher's aide or something, in a hallway in their elementary school. And I finally remembered to ask the question while I'm standing in school and not in, our, you know, my children's bedroom. How do you say that name? Do you say it Stain or Stein? And I remember her saying, well, you say Stain. Um, and she says, you know, it makes a great, uh, because these books are so popular and everybody has them, it makes a great teaching tool. We use them in class to talk about different ways that, this, that the letters E and I make a sound. You know, Very interesting. And now how is that going to be misremembered? Something. I mean, yeah. this is a, this is a, you know, this is an event that just it it wasn't just a single thing. It was a big thing. Uh, I mean, as it, you know, it wasn't like a life life <laughs> um, shattering or or you know uh, eventful thing. It, it, so to go. But you know, when I think back to my my children and their lives, I remember that vividly and other people remember that vividly. And I guess what was interesting about that photograph, and we will have it here on, on the YouTube here, is um, there are some books are out there that have the EI on them. And uh, they're an anomaly. And that's, I think that's how this whole conversation between us three gals got into play because yeah. um, I saw that and I just thought that's amazing because Everyone I know that have gotten their hands on their books since talking about this, all of their books, even if they were in the basement, even if they were in a box and hadn't been looked at for decades, when they pulled them out, even though they remembered EI, it was now AI, stain, like a stain on your carpet. And that has sent some shivers up some people's uh, backsides because they just kind of don't know what to make of that. Right, right. That is, um, that's one of the things that first got me was I immediately ran to my cupboard and looked at all my books. Um, and at first it was a little bit freaky, you know, because I remembered it the, the same way you did, Candace. I read these books to my kids thousands of times. And um, I was one that would go back and forth just like you. <laughs> Uh, seriously, back and forth, back and forth, and, and it never made sense to me, you know. Uh -huh. So when I discovered that that the anomaly was true, um, I kind of started looking around. Um, I actually, um, <laughs> I had, this. now this is a different book, but um, I had lost one of my books. Um, I had a set of three books from uh, a fellow that writes about Sasquatches, and I had lost one of the set of three. And I, I looked all over the house. I asked my husband if he'd moved it or if he had it, if he threw it away, and um, nothing. We could not find it. So I finally decided, you know, I, I guess I'll just go online and order it. And when I went online, I discovered that he did not write three books. He had wrote two books. Oh, my gosh. So, yeah. And, and what struck me about this was I actually had dinner with this author, mm -hmm. and we had talked about the Sasquatch. Mm -hmm. So I remember this very vividly, that this was my experience, that he had written the three books. But they don't exist. I mean, just two of, two of the three exist in this reality. You know, Sandy, I did an interview with him back when I was still co-hosting the Metaphysical Hour, and I'm going to butcher his name if I don't see it in front of me, but Kawani, uh, <laughs> right? Kawani Lesperitis yes. or something like that. My, forgive us, yes. uh, please, uh, for getting your name. That is one of the toughest names out there ever. And you know what, Sandy? I don't remember there being three. In my, in my, I would need to go look at my notes. <laughs> But in my my well, in my own memory, I'm remembering too. But I don't. But I I would need to go look that up. And that's just, you know, what 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 would he remember? And I guess you know pretty much he would have to remember just two because that's the reality that we're in. Exactly, exactly. But now here's part of it: is the reason I remember there was three was on this third book. There was a picture 
of a Sasquatch, and it was it was actually called the Ancient Ones, and I remember it because the book's I had name, seen the, that, that face. That was the book's name, the Ancient the, Ones. Yeah, that was the book's name, and um, the picture on the front cover was a picture that I had seen before. Like I had experienced that in in a, a mirror, actually. So. Uh, it was it was really important for me to get my hands on that book again, but um, yeah, it, it does not exist right wow. now. <laughs> maybe maybe it will. Maybe in time it will. Um, mm -hmm. But isn't that interesting that you don't remember that? No, I don't. And so we're coming into this reality here with everyone knowing something a little bit different. Isn't that interesting? Yeah. You know, um, I'm re I'm remembering actually. I believe I re I'm remembering a Dolores Cannon story about this. Uh, I, I don't know if I'm going to remember the details completely correctly, but it was something along the lines of this. It was something along the lines of uh, a woman was in a bookstore and uh, had found uh, a convoluted universe. And then I'm just going to guess because I don't really remember. But convoluted universe book, let's just say book four. And she saw convoluted universe book four and she was thrilled. She was absolutely thrilled that there was a book four because she'd already had one, two, and three. She never knew if there was going to be a four. Um, something had happened. Uh, you know, she, she was getting ready to buy it. But she, uh, it didn't happen, and she had to put the book up, and they had to leave real quick, and it was in her mind to come back um, later on that day or the next day, some, some very short time after the fact, to pick up that book because she just couldn't get it then for, for whatever reason in, in her own particular life. So she returns to the bookstore, whether it's that afternoon or the next day or something, and goes straight to where... She'd seen the book where she saw the title and she you know, saw the cover and she saw all of it. And she went to, um, and she couldn't find it. And so she went to the, uh, the proprietor and she said, you know, I was here just a little while ago or yesterday or whatever the story was. And I wanted to get Dolores Cannon's new book because I saw she wrote another convoluted universe uh, book. And the proprietor looked at her and uh, said there wasn't another one that she thought maybe she would write. Uh, you know, number four someday. And when the woman looked into it and actually, I guess, called over there, uh, had found that there was not a number four yet. Dolores wow. was in the middle of wow. writing it. And yes, as we all know, there was going to be a number four, but she swears to God she had it in her hand and was reading it. That physical thing in her hand in a bookstore before it was ever even written. Right, right. Well, that's the thing with, wow. you know, asking for physical proof. It's We're talking about things that are not really of a physical realm. We're talking about things that are, are you know, 10D, 12D, up, whatever is out there. So we're not going to be able to prove it physically in these lower realities or in these other realities. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, you know, what's proof anyway? Again, you yes. know, it's proof Wikipedia. Well, you know, no. <laughs> You know, or anything. So, um, and then there's, yeah, then there's like these uh, these Bible verses. So the Bible verses, if I'm remembering correctly, one is Isaiah 11, 6, I believe. And that, I believe, and I am not a biblical scholar by any stretch of the imagination, but I believe that that is the um, passage in the Bible that talks about the lion laying down with the lamb. Yes. And uh, everyone that I know of remembers the lion laying down with the lamb and it is now King James and in most versions of the books uh, uh, Bibles it now says when the wolf lays down with the lamb but if you do a little reading above and below it they I think they do throw the word lion in there somewhere so so what what people are saying or and what you know the naysayers or the people who are on this timeline or whatever they just say oh people have always sort of gotten that wrong because that's you know the because it's been you know it's been something like that or it's been misremembered this is just mass misremembering you know that's all that's often what is um, portrayed about that but this is where and and I'm gonna forget again Nicole the 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 one man's YouTube that we were speaking yeah. about before 
you know, he was talking about this biblical passage and then the other one about uh, why or, you know, maybe it isn't just, you know, a kid's books t title that, that has like, no. a letter swapped in it. But this is, these are some things in the Bible that can shape opinions. Absolutely. And it history if, if read in a particular way and applied to life in a particular way. And, uh, and so there's that with the wolf having some sort of symbolism different than the lion. And then, and then a second phrase, or excuse me, a second passage, I believe that was Luke 1927. And I am so amazed that I can remember that because not only are they numbers, but I'm completely sleep deprived because of what's going on in my personal life right now with with my mother who had a stroke a week ago today. I've basically been living in the intensive care unit. <laughs> and, and Nicole and Sandy were, were uh, kind enough to, to, to do this radio show on the fly with me, but I believe that's it. I believe it's Luke 1927. And this one talks about, and some people say it's a parable, but some people say it's Jesus. And I, I really don't know. Again, you know, quite frankly, I've been reading this like on yeah. my, on my, uh, I stopped at an antique store to look at a real Bible, though, believe it or not. In the middle of everything, um, I stopped on one of my drives and, and looked at a paper Bible really quick. But it, it changed. Uh, something about that changed. It was something along. That passage is, is something that, where it talks about if people will not believe in him as a king, will not believe as he should reign, then then you should bring those people to me and and we'll kill we'll kill them all right in front of our eyes or something like that slay them right before me and as far as i knew and again i'm no biblical scholar but jesus christ never in the bible anywhere said anything about ever killing anyone ever 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 <laughs> you know yeah, there those, was no killing those two really those two were really got me I, like jumped up to get my daughter's Bible and look in there and it, it, it said it in there. And the thing that I have a problem with is um, the sentiment that goes behind of course, some of those ideas. Yeah. Um, and so it's, you know, we have to really ask, are we even asking the right questions? And I think people are getting distracted by the, what, what's the, you know, in the details of what has changed and not stepping back and say, but what's the bigger implications exactly. with this? Why is it happening? Why do we, what do we need to do? Right. Uh -huh. Yes, and uh, yes, and that is why I, I see us having more and more shows like this. So you know, some of the big questions are: Is somebody doing this? Is somebody manipulating our timelines? Is somebody um, the the YouTube fellow that um, he was talking about? He, he I like the way he talked about it. You know, away teams. You know, from the Star Trek um, yes. vernacular. You know, away teams from the future coming back into this timeline and shifting and changing a few things to uh, influence uh, certain events and change uh, others and perhaps alter the course of history by small, you know, adjustments here and there of thinking or, um, you know, uh, popular culture or things, you know, sentences in the Bible. I. I would very much like to hear more about that. A, a cursory glance on on the internet, just in the brief time I had a, a chance to even look at it, which would you know would have been in just a couple of minutes here or there. You know, there's a lot of people who are very adamant, and there's and there's very apparently um, you know long-standing discussions over years about how people have just simply remembered this Bible verse wrong their entire lives. But that doesn't match up with other people's memories, their own personal memories, their personal experience. No, you know, there's something to say for personal experience because, I mean, think back, there's there's some, like, some dreams that you just remember, they just never leave you. Um, we're too quick to dismiss that. We have to get over the limitations we have about space and time. We have to really get out of the box and realize that things are not as black and white as we thought that they were. Absolutely. Well, um, Sandy, one of the things that I've been doing as we've been talking is looking at um, back to this anatomy thing. And I think I'm with you. I think these lungs, the lungs that I'm seeing on some of these anatomy pictures um, are small and the rib cage does seem higher. I mean, 
I, I'm just, I'm, I'm just. Yeah, it is. Little... Um, yeah. Where the heck did you read? Where did you read that different. one? Where did you read the anatomy one? Was that in a YouTube or something? There's so many. You, there's so many people on um, YouTube talking about it. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yes. It, it, I saw it on YouTube first, and then of course I had to Google it, mm -hmm. and then you know, when Nicole and I were talking today. Um, you know, I'm the one that's, that's poking at my ribs and, and and going, oh my gosh, look at this, you know. So, um, I think just as you as you um, think about stuff, you know, go and and check it out. Yeah. See see if if what you're finding, um, and not just on on the the internet, but um, talk with people, right? Especially if you know some some people um, with the Bible that are, are are very well versed in that, ask them about it and 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 kind of get a feeling of where they are as well. Um, I have a feeling that that people that are actually noticing the changes um, may be noticing the changes now in sort of a preparation for if other major changes happen yeah yes. so that we could possibly help and assist um, others um, understand what is actually taking place and going on you know though the again I was I've, you know I've been sitting in the ICU and sitting in the hospital um, all week and I actually just had a conversation uh, this afternoon with a man whose son was in a car accident and uh, he was telling me about the operation and uh, that, that he was going to have tomorrow morning because um, uh, there were parts of his body, his scapula and his jaw that, that were shattered that needed repairing. And I'm wondering, you know, a, a surgeon who goes into a body <laughs> to do repair is going to have to notice these things unless they, unless every surgeon who does surgery is on this timeline and it's always been that way. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. We well, hear something interesting. Well, and, Go ahead. And I actually think that that may be why um, when when you shift into a different timeline, you notice things, but then then after a while you you tend to just assimilate everything and mm -hmm. that then will possibly become your your memory as well. Yeah. Um because you think about it, if if you have surgeons that are, are shifting timelines, yeah, you want them to be knowing exactly where those organs are. <laughs> so, um, yeah. And and here's the thing, you you've probably experienced where, um, in one in one day, you notice two or three or or a dozen different shifts. So. Even within that one, I'll call it yes. timeline or reality, but you could be shifting in multiple different realities there. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, this is huge. This is amazing. Is. What, what we're actually, um, what's I don't even know what the word is for it. Well, you know, English is not easy for me. <laughs> so. You know, Sandy, this is actually probably a perfect segue into something that I wanted to bring up here. And you know, we've been talking for about an hour now. So, um, uh, what I want to do is is come close to maybe wrapping up today's um, uh, conversation about this, but absolutely continue this in the future. This is this is a fascinating t topic that needs to be talked about in multiple different ways. But but the one thing that I wanted to bring up was that there's this uh, woman, and her name is. Starfire Tour, and I guess you know she's actually been on Coast to Coast and some other um, uh, some other big shows. She is a well-known person, uh, not to me really. I think I might have heard of her before, but I I hadn't really paid attention. But she is talking about the time shift, and she writes about time shift alerts, and I just uh, I'm going to go ahead and read something that she's posted here on her Facebook page, and this is. Part of the reason that um, I asked Sandy and Nicole to do a show with me today because, you know, my mother went to bed 
on um, I guess that's Thursday, May 19th, uh, and 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 sometime in the very early hours of May 20th, 2016, um, she had a, a, a massive stroke, um, a, a very severe stroke. And so what she says, uh, Starfire Tour is, I'm going to read this directly. She said. Uh, an extraordinary series of timeline edits that happened on May 19th. And she made a report on May 20th. But here's a, a synopsis, I believe, on May 19th, 2016, which is the date that the extraordinary time shift happened, line edits were experienced. She talks about um, a particular actor, and his name is Alan Young. He was actually on um, the Mr. Ed show. And what she said is, she said, uh, Alan, actor Alan Young died again, which is, isn't that an amazing sentence to read anywhere? He died again. Yeah. He was 96 years old. This makes him a time shift living dead person, TSLD wow. person. It's common for many TSLD people, but not all, to have a last time death at an advanced age. TSLD events are time shift markers. So this TSLD event matches up to the extraordinary timeline edits that happen on the day of his latest death. TSLD time shift marker memories create dual timeline memory conflicts. Because of this, people who experience the TSLD enigma gain personal confirmation that my time shift discoveries are the real deal. It's not only evidence that supports my discoveries, but a TSLD experience is, a pers is personally undeniable. Um, and then she goes on and talks about that, and and there's uh, you know, and and that again goes into the the popular culture and everything. But I guess mm -hmm. she also talks about how there's a geomagnetic storm that trigger some of these events. And um, her latest Facebook post, and again it is May 27th right now. Her latest Facebook post was a couple of days ago, and she says, I am still working on writing up my report. Stay tuned for a fantastic read. So I think something really big has happened, you know, just this last week or so. And, and in my own family, I've watched my mother on this roller coaster of dying and then almost not dying and then, and yeah. then coming back and then going downhill and back again she is. And... Um, you know, we're still not out of the woods. My mom is still in the hospital, and uh, but today was a really good day. Well, you know, when you posted that, um, it, the, especially the timeline synchronicity with that was was interesting because I had posted uh, to a couple of my friends a dream that I had had Monday. It would have been the twenty second uh, or the twenty third, I believe. Um, and then the dream, I was really, really upset. I was crying because there was a family member in the dream that said uh, something about time, not having time for me anymore. Um, and so I'm walking up the stairs, and there's a gentleman following me. And he, to me, he seemed like a guy. There's, you know, you just kind of recognize him sure. in your dreams. And I kept saying, I don't understand why this is happening. The things really change that much from yesterday and just very nonchalantly uh -huh. the answer was yes it did oh my gosh and and this is yeah, our conversation everything has unfolded out of that um, so just astonishing absolutely it, astonishing yeah wow so what does it mean well gosh uh, you know I don't know uh, let me <laughs> you know, let we don't know. Let's talk about this more. I, I'm going to throw this one in there. I'm, I'm, I'm very good friends with a woman who's doing some, possibly, um, you know, reality shifting work, uh, and it it has something to do with humans and how they're affecting the quantum field and how we may uh, be mucking up the fabric of uh, of the quantum reality um, in ways that are that could possibly be causing some of this, which I find pretty interesting, especially if you, uh, you know, think that, well, we do this work uh, yes. as therapy and for healing others. So there's some real, uh, there's some real interesting conversations that I think will be coming up in the near term future. Ladies, you know, it's been a long day for me in so many ways. Um, I think I'm going to have to uh, call it a night here, but would you join me again for um, maybe a part three on the Mandela effect? Absolutely. Oh, yes, absolutely. Super. Okay, so um, just Definitely. to let everyone know how to 
how to find us. My name is, again, Candace Craw Goldman. You can find me at newearthjourney.com. I practice Dolores Cannon's method of quantum healing hypnosis, and I am the founder and managing director of Dolores's original support forum for practitioners of her method. And both Sandy and Nicole also practice Dolores's amazing method and do other wonderful things in their world. And how can everyone find you, Sandy? Um, they can go to my website, which is wholeselfspiritjourney.com. Um, I'm located in Lawton, Oklahoma. And I also do the, the quantum healing hypnosis, as well as a few other modalities that I really don't have a name for. <laughs> um, it's, yeah, it's just kind of out there. Um, I listen to the guides, and I do what they tell me. Sure. Got it. And Nicole, how can everyone find you? And they can reach me on uh, online. My website is naturalpathways.co or Facebook. Uh, facebook.com slash NP hypno um, and I'm in St. Joseph, Missouri just north of Kansas City where I have a conscious living center. Very good and I'm in the heart of Kansas tornado alley and thunderstorm alley these days it is um, it is a swamp out there and the rain keeps coming uh, at least it, it is this year so once again ladies thank you so very much and I want to thank all of you out there for tuning in and listening and your support as always and until next time, all shall be well. Good night, everyone.